Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play Rune Factory, a fantasy Harvest Moon. So in the last episode, we finally did the time skip episode. After about four months of delay due to illness, computer failure, more illness, working 24-7 trying to earn money to then go on vacation for six weeks in Belgium. A lot of fun, actually. Um, yeah, we're finally here, after all this time. And this is technically not the first day of winter because I, like I said at the last, the at the end of the last episode, want to do some cooking today. So I've filled up my inventory with a lot of ingredients, also tools and things. Um, that way I can actually start getting through some of this before next month. We just focused on you know progress, progress, progress. So this episode will probably just be primarily cooking, so if you're not into that, you know, skip to the next one. But if you're like, oh hey, I wonder how this all works, or you just want to hear my sultry voice, obviously, <laughs> then, you know, stick with me for this. Alright, so to start with, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this correctly. We need the level 10 recipe, bread. which we've made before. Now if we bring our bread over to the oven, we can make toast. My favorite item in Rune Factory 4, <laughs> or at least early game. I've been playing a lot of Rune Factory 4 Special recently, and uh, well, it's got me really hyped to start this up again. All right, so that is one item down. All right, now we put a grape into the blender to get grape juice. If we go up to the cooking pot, which I believe is this one, yes, one grape and one purple grass make grape liqueur. Now hot chocolate actually has three recipes because you can use any sized milk and a chocolate, which means we're going to use one large milk and a chocolate. Oh. Did, um... Okay, I didn't even consider that. Alright, I need to put some stuff away. Give me a moment. <laughs> now, like I said, if you use a chocolate and a large milk. Now, if we just take any sized milk, which we'll use a large milk for this, we can make a hot milk. Alright, if we take one egg of any size in the pot, we can make boiled eggs. And in the cooking pot, if we put a sweet potato, then we get a glazed potato. In that same cooking pot, if you take one spinach, you get boiled spinach. And one pumpkin will give you boiled pumpkin. Now in the cooking pot, if we take one flour, one onion, one cabbage, and one oil, we can make boiled gyoza. And I believe, yeah, that's a full inventory. So let's go ship these items. Alright, hot chocolate. Hot milk with chocolate added. A popular drink with the girls. Hot milk, heated milk, helps relax the body, good for sleepless nights. Sugar can be added. Boiled eggs, one way to prepare an egg. The yolk turns hard if boiled too long. Boiled spinach, boiled spinach flavored with soy sauce, turns bland if boiled too long. Boiled pumpkin, pumpkin flavored with salt and soy sauce. Glazed potato, a sweet potato glazed with a mixture of sugar and water. Popular as a snack. Um, I'm gonna move these up here so I can read them. Oh, uh, yeah. Alright. Grape juice, fresh juice from grapes, has a rich flavor and a fragrant aroma. Toast, uh, bread cooked to a golden brown color, often eaten for breakfast. Boiled gyoza. This gyoza is wrapped in a thick skin and boiled, known for its tender flavor. Grape liqueur. A type of wine. Has a special, sophisticated taste. Alright, I believe that's all the items we just made, so I'm just going to ship them all. Once again in the pot, if we use one strawberry, we get strawberry jam. If we use one grape, we get grape jam. And one orange will give us a marmalade. You can also do this with apple, but we don't have an apple readily available. 
We could grind them, or we could wait until tomorrow and actually just buy them. So I'm going to do the latter, of course. Alright, we actually need to make another bread over the no utensil area, and then over the pot, we use said bread, and one cheese of any size, we're going to use a small cheese for this, to make cheese fondue. Alright, if we take one flour, we make udon. Now we also want to make another udon. And while we're at it, one third udon. Now contrary to what we just said, I'm actually going to make a fourth udon. And we're going to head down here. We're going to take one of these udon alongside oil to make fried udon. While we're here, I actually... So, I don't have one of the ingredients I need to make one of these things. So we'll have to wait on that for later. Alright, up at the pot once again, you take one udon and the curry powder I have sitting here to make curry udon. Now, if we had the ability to make tempura, we can make tempura udon, but we're missing out on... Uh, shrimp right now, so we're gonna have to wait on that. Now over here in the cooking pot, once again, we take one rice to make rice porridge. We can take one rice and one milk of any size to make milk porridge. One rice and one egg of any size will make an egg bowl. If we take one flour and one milk of any size, we'll make stew. And once again, we have a full inventory. So we have one strawberry jam. Strawberries simmered together with sugar, usually applied to bread. Grape jam. Grapes simmered together with sugar, usually applied to bread. Marmite. Orange simmered together. The peels are also sliced up and used. This dish features melted cheese in a pot, perfect for serving numerous guests. Easy slurping thick noodles. Various ingredients can be added as toppings. Rice topped with seasoned eggs. Some prefer the egg sweet, others salty. Rice porridge mixed with milk for a sweeter flavor. Soupy rice saturated with water, the perfect dish for those suffering from a cold. This simple dish consists of fried udon noodles. Curry mixed with udon tastes great and has a distinct look. A staple food for many, rice is even the- oh, actually no, that's not what we're doing. Vegetables simmered with milk, thick, sweet, white stew is highly popular. And that's it. That's everything. Okay, the final item I've left in here is udon, which I'll save for later. Blue, green, red, yellow, orange, and purple. All together make relaxed tea leaves. We've done this before, of course, but with relaxed tea leaves, and I believe that's it in this one, we can make relaxed tea. Nice. Um, beyond that, there are a couple more recipes in the pot, but we can't do them. Actually, no, we can do one of them. We can make curry rice. There, that is all the pot recipes we can do today. We can get more of those things done later. Alright, here at the steamer we're going to use one flour and one oil together to make steamed bread. Also at the steamer, if we take one small cheese, one flour, and one oil, we can make cheese bread. If you take one egg of any size, one flour, one cabbage, and one onion, you make the meat dumpling. If we take one flour, one bamboo shoot, or bamboo sprout, I guess, in this game, and one carrot, we make the Chinese manju. And if we take one egg of any size, and one flour, we make the pound cake! Now, if you take milk of any size, uh, an egg of any size, 
and one oil, one whole oil, you get steamed cake. That of course leads to nine different recipes. <laughs> Alright, if you take one egg of any size and one milk of any size, you get pudding. And if you take one egg of any size, one milk of any size, and one pumpkin, you get the pumpkin pudding. That one's for you, Emily. So we have relaxed tea. This refreshing tea uses a mixture of num numerous medicinal herbs. A popular dish among children, this meal is a regular favorite. Bread steamed to a fluffy state, its sweet taste makes it perfect for a snack. Steamed bread mixed with cheese possesses a refined flavor. Meat dumpling, this simple dish is soft and sweet. Chinese manju, various ingredients uh, wrapped together in a fluffy roll of dough. Steaming this rectangular cake creates a gentler type of sweetness. This fluffy cake is so soft even babies can eat it. This creamy snack is almost as bittersweet as love itself, oof. And this rich flavor of a pumpkin has been added to this beautifully golden pumpkin. Or pudding. Pudding. Moving on. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did curry manju or steamed gyoza. We'll have to figure that out. So I'm not gonna lie, I kinda just lost track of exactly which ones I had done. I'm pretty sure I missed three in there. One of them I can't do until I buy another ingredient, but I'll take care of that later in the day. For now, we're gonna move on to the oven. So if we take one rice, we can make the baked rice ball. Now we need to make one more strawberry jam. I meant grape jam. We need to make one more grape jam, that's what I meant to say. And we need to make one more bread. Now in the oven, if we take grape jam, or apple jam, or strawberry jam, I believe the other one is, and some bread, we can make the jam roll. As a reminder, you can actually go to Camus' shop to buy milk, and it doesn't matter what size we're using, so... Perfect. Now if you go in your oven, use one milk of any size, one egg of any size, and... where is it? Some butter you can make the butter roll. Of course, that leads to nine different combinations you can do, so have fun with that. The blender, if we use a tomato and an onion, we can make a ketchup. Now, of course, the ketchup, the cheese of any size, so we're just gonna use a small cheese, and one flour. We'll make pizza. P A Z Z A. Now we could also make seafood pizza if we had access to shrimp, which we do not. So later date. Now if we take one milk of any size, one rice, one onion, one flour, and one butter, we make the doria. We could also make seafood doria, but once again, it requires shrimp. Now you need one milk of any size, a cheese of any size, an onion, a flour, and a butter to make the gratin. This one, let's see, I don't think I have the ingredient to make the seafood gratin. I do not. You need squid to make seafood gratin, we do not currently have it. But I can go out and try to get one tonight. One small milk, one sweet potato, and one butter. I believe that's all that's in there. Yes, I'm correct. We'll make the sweet potato. Um, I believe Feature Games calls this the sweetie potato. This game just kind of doesn't always have the best translation, to be honest. It's fine. Now, one milk of any size, one flour, and one butter make cookies. One flour, one milk, one butter to make another set of cookies. Now, to use one of those cookies, some chocolate, 
and some butter together to make the chocolate cookie, the cocoa cookie. One milk, one flour, one butter, and one strawberry all together make the cake. And I believe we're out of room once again. Yep. Alright. Baked rice ball. Rice ball baked with golden brown. Crispy. A roll with jam inside. Good as a snack or as a side dish. Although countless variations exist, this personifies the typical image of a cake. Small and easy to eat, these sweet rolls are mixed with butter and baked in an oven. Round dough cooked the round dough cooked with cheese, tomatoes, or other toppings. Rice covered in white sauce and baked until the surface is crisp. A mixture of white sauce and cheese poured into a dish and baked in the oven. Strained sweet potato mixed with milk and butter and baked in the oven. A flour-based confection that's popular as a pres present. Bleh. A flour-based confection with a bittersweet, sophisticated flavor. One milk of any size, one flour, one butter, and one piece of chocolate will make the chocolate cake. Alright. One milk of any kind, one cheese of any kind, and one egg of any kind will make the cheesecake. That is a grand total of 27? 27 different variations to that one dish. Yikes. And I believe that's all the onion, onion oven ones we can do currently. So I'll mark those ones down. If we head over to the blender, we mix one pineapple, one grape, one orange, and one tomato together. We can get the fruit juice. It doesn't use apple and instead uses tomato. I have a lot of questions, to be honest. Now we're going to do the exact same thing once again to get a second one of these. Now we're going to take one cucumber, one cabbage, and one carrot to make the vegetable juice. And we're going to do the exact same thing once again. Now we're going to take one of our fruit juice, one of our vegetable juice, to make mixed juice. Now we're going to take one of these fruit juice and one milk to make a fruit allay to then make a vegetable allay now one more vegetable juice to take um, one fruit juice one vegetable juice and one milk to make the mixed allay now we're gonna go to the no utensil section take one cucumber one cabbage one carrot and I don't have another tomato. Interesting. Uh, underprepared, I guess. Whoops. So I'm not sure whether I don't have tomato like growing or anything, or if I just, you know, what I'm doing right now. So I guess we're gonna shelve those recipes for later. Alright, we are going to make another bread. And then we're going to take that bread and just shove grapes into it. To make raisin bread. Seems legit, right? And just in case I'm missing something that grapes are actually used for, I'm actually going to buy some more grapes, since I have the space for it now. Over at the frying pan, we're going to take a potato and some oil to make french fries. We're then going to take any sized egg and some oil to make fried eggs. We are then going to take one potato, one oil, one onion, one flour, and an egg of any size to make croquettes. We're going to take one oil, one cabbage, and one green pepper to make fried veggies. 
Now if we take one flower, one cabbage, one oil, and one egg of any size, we can make the cabbage cakes. Okay, one chocolate cake, a chocolate sponge cake. Its bittersweet flavor gives it a sophisticated taste. Cheesecake. Various cheeses are combined with eggs and other ingredients, then baked. A mixture of vegetable and fruit juices tastes sweet and is good for you. A mixture of fruit for uh, fruits for twice the flavor and twice the nutrition. A highly nutritious drink. Not easy to swallow, but very good for you. Fruit juice. Uh, fruit lay. Uh, fruit juice mixed together with milk has a deliciously mellow flavor. Vegetable juice mixed with milk to soften the bitter taste. A mixture of uh, vegetable juice, fruit juice, and milk. Very healthy. Bread sprinkled with dried grapes, soft, sweet, and just a tad bit tart. This popular folk dish is prepared by frying oval-shaped mashed potatoes. A mixture of fried vegetables, delicious yet easy to prepare. Peeled potatoes fried in oil, crisp and spicy. A popular way to prepare eggs in which the surface is fried to a moderate stiffness. A fried fish containing a uh, fried dish containing cabbage and flour. Flavoring varies depending on locale. And we don't have a one for this spot. Actually, croquettes, I know I've had them sometime before, but I can't really remember when. So more recently, I had them when I was in Belgium, and they were super good. I love them. Then again, I also love potatoes. And that is all the cooking we're doing for today. We have done most of the things we can do today. I believe there's two more that I could do. Beyond that, there's like two more I could potentially do today if I were to go out and get the ingredients, but it's just not important. <laughs> so... This is the final day today, so I need to go through, start off by, you know, doing this, and I need to pick all my stuff. We're back to actually doing normal stuff again. So next season's winter, we're not going to be able to do anything as far as crops go, but I don't think that's going to stop us from having a good time. We're going to be finally dungeon crawling. Going to the Misty Boom Cave and taking it on, and it has been four freaking months. I just. I was so sick for a while. Even like during the November recording sessions I was doing, I was so sick just trying to get through things and not let it keep me down. And finally, December rolled around, and I was just working so much trying to keep up with things. And January rolled around, and I was working 24 7 and had a broken computer sometime in December ish. I just. everything kind of sucked for a while, but I got through it and got to go on a vacation and had a lot of fun. It's been a really weird year, but I'm glad I'm doing all this. I say as I just go around picking all these crops. Also, this last year I actually started growing crops with my mother. We uh, grow a bunch of kinds of potatoes and uh, t tomatoes, uh, raspberries, other things like that. Just, you know, fun. We do some carrots as well, or at least I don't really have a hand in that. It's more my niece and nephew along with my mother. But, you know, they all had fun with it. They were super sweet as well. Alright, I guess I can go up here. Welcome. Hey there. Welcome! Can I see the menu? Um, there we go. One package of rice dumplings, please. We could actually just buy a salad here and ship it. <laughs> and while I can do that, I'm not going to just because I want to say I've made every item as well. But, you know, if you're just trying to fill out your shipping list, that's totally something you could do if you want to. Be a rough and cheater, who cares? We know who you are. Alright, I guess I lied, there's another item I'm making. Use rice dumplings. And you get rice cake ball. Now, rice cake ball. Round rice cake balls on a stick used at festivals. Various sauces can be added. So 
So we're actually low energy, so I'm going to take this one and actually harvest these. Moondrop. This mysterious grass grows in the moonlight and sprouts yellow flowers. It is a spring crop, and um, yeah, apparently I've never actually, you know, shipped it. So there we go. Another one down. So I actually didn't remember this until I was just reading something else. But, let's buy from the uh, shack over here, one squid. Anything else we care about? Sardine? No. Alright, cool. So, this little squid right here will actually let us make the seafood... Grotten? Doria? Something like that. It's one of the ones. I'll check the recipe in just a moment. Alright, here in the oven, we take one butter, one cheese of any size, one flour, one milk of any size, one squid, and one onion to make the seafood gratin. Gratin tops with mysterious seafood ingredients. Best to, best to use warm milk when preparing. Alright, there we go. That's done. Alright, we're about done. Guys, next time on Let's Play Rune Factory, a Fantasy Harvest Moon, we'll be back to story-based stuff. This was just a cooking episode, I mentioned that before, I'm just going to waste the last of my energy. But as a final note to just kind of preface tomorrow, these are our current stats. 88 swordsmanship, 48 forging, 29 mining, 41 farming, 43 communication. I have not done anything with camping yet. Level 71 pharmacy. 67 decoration, 64 logging, 98 cooking, 31 fishing. The cooking will get to max just by cooking up the rest of the dishes. It's already gone up like six times today alone. So, you know, we're doing well. And we're also level 83. I believe I've gone up something like 54 levels since we beat the Grimoire boss. We're doing well for ourselves. Also, apparently I have a level 2 Charm Blue. I'll just ship that because it's taking up more space and I just don't... Actually, you know what? I'll eat it! Yeah, just did that. Just ate a uh, thorn-covered flower. Kind of a, kind of a total, uh, you know, awesome guy. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Bye, guys. I'll see you all next time.